Jay Billis, ESPN college basketball analyst and genuinely great guy. Uh, Jay, did you ever believe, and thank you for joining us, did you ever believe we'd get to this moment? Yeah, I did. I wasn't sure exactly when it would happen, but but I really believe that uh, that sort of the NCAA's price fixing cartel behavior would be exposed at some point, and the courts would catch up uh, to what I consider to be illegal behavior and business practices. And you know, it's it's funny the the last time that the NCAA was in front of the United States Supreme Court was in 1984. It was called the Board of Regents case. And the NCAA was sued under the same theory of antitrust violation, but they were sued by the schools when the NCAA was was telling the schools, here's how often you can be on television. And the schools were saying, no, we want to make money. We want to be on TV when we think we should be on TV, that kind of thing. And and there was drastic change after that in revenue generation and the, and the amount of money that coaches were making, you name it. Um, and now the players, uh, but nobody complained. Nobody said, hey, the sky is falling or this is going to change college athletics as we know it. Uh, they embraced it. They dealt with it. And we figured it out. But now that athletes are, are uh, uh, poised to start making money, um, you know, it, it, we've got doomsday prognosticators out there. And I don't buy any of it. I, I think the sun's going to come up tomorrow and the world will remain firmly on its axis. And uh, the players will still get their degrees, and uh, and the games will start on time, and all the checks will clear. It's not this big of a deal. The rest of the world engages in commerce. College athletes can too. Jay Billis with us here on the Goodyear Hotline. Yeah, amen to that for sure. And, again, I don't know if you heard me talking before you jumped on. The schools aren't paying them directly. I don't understand what the objection here is. If, if, if I go to college and I want to become an entrepreneur and I have an academic scholarship, there's nothing against the rules that I can't create some sort of business for myself. Why athletes? Like, what, what is the objection if they're not going to pay them directly? Well, one is the history of it. So a lot of people have a hard time wrapping their heads around it, almost like, uh, like when amateurism was taken out of the Olympic Charter back in the day. The, the second part of it is the NCAA and the member institutions, they know that uh, that this is only other people paying the players now, that it's going to get to the schools, that they're going to have to pay them at some point. You know, the Supreme Court ruling was limited uh, in its scope, but it wasn't limited in what it, what it was really uh, telling in the future. And that was that all of these business practices that the NCAA uses are going to be found to be illegal. And and before you know it, unless Congress steps in and and passes a law that says uh, schools can't pay players, uh, we're just a few court cases away from from schools paying their players. That, that that's the that's where it's going to wind up uh, because all of these restrictions on athletes are violative of federal antitrust law. And it's just going to take a couple more cases uh, in, in order for that to, that to be established. The Supreme Court basically said it. In any other industry, the NCAA's business practices would be per se illegal. And, uh, and the, the NCAA heard that loud and clear. And that's what they're most afraid of is that they're going to keep losing these cases. And if Congress doesn't give them safe harbor to allow them to continue to violate antitrust law, uh, they're going to they're have to actually do business like everybody else. Jay Billis with us here on the Goodyear Hotline. What do you think Congress will do? Will they do something in this regard? That I mean, they, they, it seems like a Hail Mary of sorts, but what do you think transpires there? I don't know. I mean, I, I think they're poised to act in some regard, but they don't know. It, there, there's division uh, among lawmakers as to exactly what should happen. And I, there, there's, I think there's some sympathetic uh, uh, people out there to the idea that there needs to be a national standard, you know, just one standard, not 50 different states. I'm not one of those people. I mean, we have 50 different income, state income tax laws, and, right. and the NCAA is not complaining that Florida and Texas have an advantage in hiring coaches and employees because they won't have to pay state income tax. They just do business. It's not that big of a deal. And this wouldn't be either. If, like, I, the way I look at it, if a state thinks that another state has an advantage, then pass a different law that, that equals theirs. Like, that's what competition's all about. We've seen that already. But what I'm hopeful of is, the, is Congress does not provide the NCAA with the ability to continue uh, to violate the law as they have for over 100 years now with, with illegal business practices. Um, we'll see what happens, but that, that's, what, that's what all the attention of the NCAA is now, is lobbying Congress 
to give them the ability to continue to do what they've been doing. And, and they want to draw the line now on employment. They don't want the athletes to be employees. And that, that's really the last ditch effort they have here. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I, I mean, I, I think one of the things, George, that I think could happen is it's going to take Congress a while to act. And in the meantime, what I think everybody will find is we'll figure this out and everybody will do just fine. And, and when there's no urgency, when the games are going off on time and college football stadiums are full and players are, are doing endorsement deals and there are no major issues, uh, Congress will say, you know what, it's going, it's going good. Uh, we're good here. We, we can leave this to the states. We don't need to get involved. We'll see. But, uh, but I'm not worried that the sky is going to fall and doomsday is around the corner as the NCAA has promised us all these years. Uh, I, th- I, think the, I, I think the players are going to be able to do business and the schools can make their own decisions on how they want to handle it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.